My name is Phil Smith, and I'm the chairman of this, this year of the Strategic Planning Committee, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our second town hall meeting that we will be convening during the process of updating the annual plan to the uh, community club. And the first meeting that we had was on February 26th, and during that time we discussed the uh, issues that, that uh, emerging Uh, such as ours, and we compared ourselves to, with 75 other communities throughout the southeast primarily. This meeting is going to focus on the second part of our planning process, and that's the SWOT analysis, where we as a committee have gone through the process of identifying strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we've spent a considerable amount of time on that, and we're going to be talking about that in a few minutes. And then the third and final town hall meeting will be when we bring to you the tentative recommendations that we will be making to the club. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce uh, the members of the committee, starting with Jim Grease, who's a co-chairman, John Ulberg, Bill Booth, who you heard from the last time when he did the uh, presentation at that point, Steve Crane, and David Bell. And then back there hiding is Bill Craig. So I appreciate all the efforts that they've put into this work this year. It's a considerable amount of time. And uh, we hope that uh, your participation will help us uh, come to, to, to develop some of the plans that, that we hope to be able to present to the board later. I also want to introduce the general manager, and Ken Farrell, who's the board member and is our liaison to our committee. And Jeannie Miller just walked in, one of our board members. The Strategic Planning Committee is appointed by the board. There is an authorization for nine members. We currently have eight. And every year in the summer, applicants are taken. Uh, and then the board will select and announce new members. So as a commercial, if any of you are interested in participating in this in the future, please keep that in mind. Okay. And one final comment also before we start is that our, while our meetings are closed, Anyone that wants to make a presentation or meet with us can do so and just by contacting me and we will schedule that. We want to be inclusive. We want an opportunity to hear from you. That's why these town hall meetings are so important to us. What we will do after this, we will go back, we will form some recommendations, we will bring them back to you in July, and that time there will be tentative recommendations. We'll have an opportunity to get your feedback and then we'll finalize them and take them to the board in September 20th. So with that, I want to just go through the responsibilities of the SBC and then I'll turn it over to Jim. What we've been doing is that, first of all, is identify national and local trends. And we did that the first meeting that we had in February. And then we want to continue to identify core values and key principles held by the Glade members. And that's con a continuous process, making sure that we're uh, attuned to what members want, what they expect. And then third, we want to identify the key issues and challenges that face both the management of the community club and the members that participate and live here. And then finally, it's a matter of recommending strategic initiatives to support these emerging trends, these values and principles while addressing all these challenges. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim, who spent a considerable amount of time putting this together. Uh, we appreciate what you've done. Yes.
Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I want to go over, give you a little understanding of what strategic planning is and what we've done so far. I guess I've got to stand on this side for it to move. <clears throat> First, we always look at our core values, and they're up here. The only difference between my screen and this one here is when we had our strategic direction survey last year, we asked what our members, if they approved of this, strongly approved, disapproved, and the percentages are written here. I don't think anything's less than a 92, so we feel pretty confident that we've identified the core values. Uh, to go over them, safe and secure environment, Maintain a friendly, caring, and respectful at atmosphere. Maintain honesty, integrity, and transparency in everything we do. Providing a variety of high quality amenities and services, which reflect the, uh, reflect the interest of our current and prospective members and guests. Maintain community standards to safeguard property values. thing is work. Manage our natural environment by promoting and preserving trails, natural areas, common areas, maintaining a physically, socially, and intellectually vibrant lifestyle. Maintain sound financial management for stability and future investment. Maintain a strong relationship with local governments and other entities that help our communities. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Acting in the best long-term interest of our community as a whole. Now, <clears throat> like Phil said before, we had a town hall meeting in February, where we went over emerging trends. In that town hall, we gave our results of research that we did in the communities similar to us across the southeast. From that, we used that as a basis to determine our strengths, our weaknesses, opportunities, things like that. It gave us a baseline of what other resort retirement com communities are doing. This one is called a SWOT analysis, and it's not a bunch of guys in black outfits with guns. SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The process we used to identify those, we reviewed the findings of the emergency trends analysis, we also listened to the feedback from that last meeting and used those in our discussions. We held a traditional SWOT analysis all day workshop with our planning committee's membership. This is where we brainstormed on what our strengths were, what our weaknesses were, challenges, threats. Oops, excuse me, this thing's going the wrong way. Uh, we also reviewed the findings of the focus group meetings that you had last year when we were preparing for the uh, strategic direction survey. We went over the results of those focus groups to see if we missed anything. Uh, we looked at last year's strategic direction survey to get information. But the biggest thing was perform numerous and numerous seems to be in the thousands, reviews 
of what category to put what items. We held detailed discussions on each SWAT item that we identified. And we went through this. We started with a, quite a bit. I don't know the number, but we kept narrowing it down the more we discussed things like this. And then we constantly reviewed the slides generated for this meeting. Now, stage two of the process requires the identification of these strengths, weaknesses, <clears throat> opportunities, and threats. It does not include the development of recommendations. That's done for the next town hall. So please remember that this is only identification. It's not solving problems today. Now, let's talk about the definitions. And this, uh, these are what we use for our definitions. Now, they may be a little bit different than textbook and things like this, but I used to teach strategic planning in the master's programs in a couple schools, and you tailor what they are based on the audience and now how they'll perceive them. Strengths. This is what we offer or do that's equal to or better than the competition. We looked at the resorts that we, and retirement communities that we looked in emerging trends, compared ourselves to them. Weakness, something that we offer or does that is less than the other communities that we looked at. Opportunities are external threads, trends, or areas that Fairfield Glade could capitalize on to increase its strengths. Now, if you look at weaknesses and opportunities, your definition changes. We fought over quite a bit whether it was a weakness or an opportunity. I always had a boss that said, we don't have any weaknesses, we just got opportunities. He didn't want to know that he had weaknesses, so it's just all opportunities to improve. Threats come from external factors that could threaten Fairfield Glade's success. All we can do here is to develop plans to react if something happens to threaten Fairfield Glade. Now, the strengths controlled by Fairfield Glade. I'm going to break each of these items down as those controlled by Fairfield Glade and those that Fairfield Glade can only influence other units that affect it. Okay, we're going to look at amenities. We decide what amenities we have and how we improve them. Commercial partnerships, that's part of being successful. Uh, we must work with partners. This is one of our strengths. We seem to work very well. We'll get to that later. The community itself, that's the makeup of Fairfield Glade. Financial, management, marketing, and public services. Now, let's look at amenities. The number and variety of quality amenities. When we can to the other communities, we did not have anyone that offered as much of the high quality amenities that it was described at. We have five golf courses, two of the top five in Tennessee. We have major lakes, marinas. We have indoor and outdoor racket sports. 
We have indoor and outdoor swimming pools, high quality natural and paved hiking trails. We have our own library, we have our own art center, and we have a quantity of dining options. Now, that doesn't mean just the two we have. I'm talking about in the community. There's commercial restaurants also. Strengths, commercial partnerships. This is, we have to work with organizations outside of us to get things done. We have active participation with the developer. We have to know what Tom Anderson's gonna do. We have to convince them to do what we want. A positive Wyndham relationship. Now Wyndham just manages the timeshares. So when I'm talking about Wyndham, I'm talking about working with the timeshares. Financial resources and partnerships, and that's all three of us together. We have convenient access to basic medical services. Basic meaning right across the parking lot over there. Other lodging, I don't know if people's aware of it, we have condo and timeshare units for golf package visitors and guests. And the thing that stunned me was 45% of our golfers are visitors, guests. So that's a lot of uh, money coming from the outside. Then elderly support. Good Samaritans facilities plus Fairfield Glade Resident Services. Fairfield Glade Resident Services is not part of Fairfield Glade's management or membership. It's an, uh, an organization that stands on its own, a volunteer organization. Community, and this is from the surveys we look on people coming and buying here in Fairfield Glade. This is the number one thing they come. They like the community, the people that are here. There is a sense of community. There's a variety of number of clubs and interest groups. We control our old residential zoning. And we have an extra parent at the end. Diversity in home prices, you can go from 125,000 up to $900,000 and find a house in between. Ongoing growth, we have quite a few unavailable or undeveloped lots so we can keep growing. We have a variety of lot types. Those that like to be on a wooden lot, ones want to be on the golf course, others want to be around lakes. So we have a big variety there. Green space and outdoor gathering places, the square, Mirror Lake, the marinas, Robin Hood Park, all that's available to our community. We also have no age restriction. So we can have a diverse population here. Variety of residents' backgrounds and professional experience. Being in committees, I'm surprised at the depth that we have across all businesses, education, technology, and those people volunteer to help. Yeah. The, res the volunteer opportunities. This was a big one for me. Uh, Normally, no one ever wants to take me for anything, but here I can do a lot. Residents' involvement, that's one thing that I see. I drive for way to go. I see all these other people that are involved in the community. So, to me, you got a strong residence here. Cultural and learning opportunities. Oh. I know you all read ahead anyways, but. <laughs> churches in the communities. We got a lot more churches than most of the other communities do. Part of this because we donated land to them. Part of it because our community is very religious. 
Now on the financial side, rising property values. I know since I've moved here five years ago, my house has gone up significantly in value. Strength, <coughs> strength in numbers. We have a lot of dues paying lots and homes. When we compare to the other uh, resort retirement communities, we're way above them as far as the number of people involved. Minimal community debt. The balance sheet, if you look at it, has very little debt for an organization this size. Pay to play dues and fee structures. When we looked at the other resort retirement communities, there were some that was just pay this amount and use whatever amenity you want. They tended to be outrageous in their HOAs. By doing play, pay to play, we can keep our HOAs more normal, I guess you'd call it. Our dues do provide the best value that we saw in any organization. And timeshare revenue reduces our members' dues. A lot of people don't understand that because we get more dues from the timeshares than we get from the homeowners. Now, strengths, the quality of the Fairfield Glade staff, uh, positive financial condition. If you look at the uh, balance sheet, like I said, uh, we have one suggestion later on. Experience management. Bob told me to put that in. Did I get it, Bob? And ongoing infrastructure improvements. We have a plan in this community to improve our facilities. A lot of other resorts, as soon as all the units are sold, they're gone, the management. Marketing, national recognition is a top community to retire. Up in Chicago, you hear about Fairfield Glade all the time. Matter of fact, I heard about it in Italy. That's when we first decided to come here. Dedicated marketing department within Fairfield Glade. They do a very good job. And our partners do top marketing. Public services. We have our own police department. We have our own fire department, our own sewer and wastewater system, our own garbage pickup, and we have a post office on site. Now, strengths that we don't control, but they become a strength for us. Okay, the first one is God-given, and the second one's government, which sometimes the government thinks they're God. <laughs> Our geographic location, we're within one day's drive of anywhere to the Mississippi to the East Coast. Natural beauty, the mountains, the trees, the moderate four season climate, God gave us that. It wasn't Bob Weber and his group, it was God. Okay, that's why we're calling it God's given. Now, government, Tennessee is the top state in which to retire because it's financially well managed. The low cost of living in Tennessee helps. I know in Illinois, my property taxes were 12 times of what they are in Tennessee. And I have a more expensive house here than I did there. Uh, proximity to state and national parks. This to me is one of the best things around here. I don't have to pay money to chase a golf ball around. I can just go walk around the woods anyways and not have to look for golf balls. <laughs> Protection from nearby development. Uh, we have certain land here, Tennessee says we're not gonna touch and it backs up to us. So we're pretty good on that. We're close to I-40, uh, which will get you anywhere you need to go to another expressway or wherever. And we're pretty close to college and professional sports. 
Although the Predators didn't do that well this year, I don't know if they were worth the hour and 45 minute drive, but they're close. <laughs> now, here's the one you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. What we perceive as weaknesses. Now, weakness, these items can be directly improved or influenced. Again, I'm trying to point out that there's things that we can do regardless, and then there's things other community or other organizations do that we have to influence. Now the weaknesses we can improve is amenities, community, financial, and management. We're getting older and outdated amenity buildings. Now remember, we're looking 10 years in the future, remember the second slide? I am going to quiz you on what was on the second slide because Phil gave that one. We look in the future and what we feel, uh, well, we'll get to that later. I think I have it somewhere else. Our bocce ball location and quality of facilities. This is big. I didn't realize how big bocce ball was when I lived in Europe, I knew. but. Uh, when we looked at the other retirement and resort communities, it was a major addition to each one, and it was showcased. It was not by the burning leaves. 75% of them had them. Lack of pool and billiards facility. Again, this was found as amenities in the other organizations, the other communities that we looked at. 63%. Community. This is something the clubs have brought up, although right now I think the uh, free space is available, but in the future we don't see anything being built. If people want to play cards somewhere, have their own room to rent.